Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure and the honor today to welcome a man who has done a marvelous, wonderful work to help humanity. This man is the person who makes this. I've been recommending you this Rife frequency generator, Spooky 2, that I have. And it is my real pleasure to welcome John White. John, how are you? Hello, Elena. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I am very well. I'm so excited to be able to interview you. It's it's uh, it's going to be so helpful for everyone. Oh. You are <laughs> you are a rife researcher and inventor from New Zealand. You're now living in Nanjing, China, with a background in electrical engineering, physics, and computer sciences. You have been researching and developing solutions to serious diseases since 2018. John, you specializes in energy and scalar resonance healing, photon biofeedback, and PEMF therapy. With an insatiable desire for truth and knowledge, you have collaborated with global research groups to discover answers to health issues. You established as well the Cancer Clinic in New Zealand in 2010 and introduced the Spooky 2 line of products to the world in 2013. Since then, you focused and provided affordable health solutions for everyday people. So I'm very, very, very happy that you're here today with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I was very thrilled to hear that you accepted our re request to be on your show. You're very um, <laughs> loved by thousands and thousands of people. Well, you, you thank you. I, I'm the one thanking you. And uh, you are actually in China at the moment, and I'm in Ireland. So we've had a little bit of difficulties to find a, a, a time where we could uh, be awake both at the same time. <laughs> So, polar <laughs> so, John, please t tell us what is the, the 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 rife frequency and how it it was discovered. Please, I I I let you explain now. Please. Sure. Well, the the word rife is actually a name of a very clever man who lived in the start of the uh, 1900s. He did a lot of research in areas pertaining to health. He wanted to know whether he could see viruses. Until then, no one had managed to see a live virus. In fact, even now, uh, microscopes have to kill, disable that spray with gold, the specimen, to observe uh, viruses through an electron microscope. But he wanted to do it whilst the virus was alive. And there's a very good reason for that. Uh, he invented his microscopes. And then he turned towards finding ways of killing or disabling the viruses. He could observe the, the virus live and then uh, apply different frequencies and see if any of these frequencies would disable or kill the virus or bacteria. And um, so everything that he was doing was pretty much leading edge. He was a true genius, just as Tesla was. He had so many skill sets that he didn't have to rely on other people to provide for him. He was a, um, an expert in microscopy. He, and he proved this after, you know, while he was inventing his microscopes. But he also uh, broke the uh, water record for uh, a speedboat. People don't really, <laughs> most people don't know this, but he, he invented the motor that drove this boat to amazing speeds. He was a very accomplished musician. And he used his ear of um, tones of being able to, to discern 
you know, different notes uh, to tune his devices. And he had very sharp eyesight. He was a very, um, very accomplished sharpshooter. And uh, he, he did other things as well. He's, he's a very interesting fellow. He's the sort of person you'd want to have as a neighbour, so you'd wander over and have him a talk to. There's nothing that he didn't know, basically, or he wasn't able to learn, self-learn. Uh, so he invented the microscope. He, inv he invented machines to apply frequencies. And through the, those two inventions, he discovered that, indeed, viruses and other microscopic um, microorganisms, the nasties that are inside us, going, coming for a free ride, they can be eliminated selectively, which means you can kill something and then not kill its neighbour. Then all the body has to do is clean out the garbage. And that's kind of cool. Most of us, in fact, all of us, are carrying around uh, these freeloaders, these microscopic entities that are making our lives miserable, that either create an environment inside our body which is um, which is inducive to serious diseases or directly attacking us and causing serious illnesses. So either directly or indirectly, these little things inside us are not very good and it's best to be rid of them. Because the frequencies are selective in here, you can target certain viruses and leave beneficial bacteria in your body alive so you don't lose your gut flora, for example, through the use of frequencies. So Royal Raymond Rife, he's the man that made the discovery. Um, now, this was back in the 1930s when he had um, come to these conclusions and provided positive proof. He um, had a trial. He was, um, at that time, the, um, the system was more open than it is now. And, they, and, and, and the medical system said, look, can you provide a trial that is sponsored by us? We provide everything. And we provide the people that are you know, taking notes and uh, analysing the results. We'll, put, we'll even provide the patients for you. All you need to do is provide the machines and use them, apply them in the way that you know is best. And the results are rather stunning. And I'll show you those results later on. So that was 1930, which is 90 years ago. Between then and now, um, the system has changed a lot, uh, and the reliance is, be is now more, more um, targeting symptoms or controlling diseases as opposed to removing the causative agents, which is rather sad. Uh, and it's certainly not the future that Royal Rife envisioned. So many years ago, I came to see, you know, that the injustice that's been, that was brought upon him, I saw how people now are being taken for a ride. And I decided, well, I'll take them on a different ride. I'll take them on a ride, which is more honest and uh, has, has, uh, has some sort of hope of providing a better life, not for the use of... Um, biological agents, but through more natural means. Vibrations and frequencies are natural. Everything is a vibration. On a molecular level, everything is. And so what we're doing is applying something which is natural. Not a, it's not a foreign thing that you're ingesting or anything like this. Yeah. It's a natural thing that you're applying to the body. 
uh, it just so happens that a certain virus or bacteria, parasite, some form of pathogen, could be a fungus, could be anything, if you choose the right frequency, only that target will be affected and be destroyed and all the rest will be untouched. So it's like taking a knife, you can cut out a, a, a beautiful red apple, my mouth is watering already, uh, and it's got a bit of a brown spot. Maybe a, a worm has decided it's also very nice. I've got nothing against worms. Worms are beautiful, but I don't want to ingest that. So I take a knife and I cut it out. And I do so, so I don't, I don't have to cut half the apple, just cut out where the worm has eaten into the apple. You know, eat the rest of this juicy apple. I guess that's an analogy to what we're doing here. We're targeting just a small part of bad that's inside your body and leaving the whole lot of good still there. If you have your skin infected, if, let's say you've got a, um, a cancer spot in your skin, when they cut that spot out, they cut a large section of um, tissue around there and quite deep as well in order to uh, get all the cells. Well, that's, that's good and fine, but you can supplement that by also directly killing the um, cancerous cells or the viruses which are causing the cancer that's inside your cells. What are you I, doing? Sorry. No, well, I, I just wanted to bring a, a little anecdote here. Uh, my audience know I've tried a med bed in year 2000 in France. It was an experimental med bed coming, bed bed coming from the States. Uh, the clinic has disappeared now. But I had a tumor in my uh, lower belly and they laid me down uh, on a transparent table. There were water underneath and they were shooting at sound frequencies at the tumor. And uh, the person said it's very, it was very surgical frequency like a little cannon like laser rays of frequencies and it destroyed well it disintegrated only the tumor uh, cancerogenic uh the, the tumor tissues and anything was nothing else was burnt nothing else not even the, the skin they, they went through but the frequency they used was the frequency of the tumor so i can really testify this is um this is uh this works so uh, sorry to interrupt you i'll let you continue oh no it's, well i love interruptions like that if you call it an interruption <laughs> i'd call it more a contribution <laughs> now i i discovered um the power frequencies i guess through my formal training as an electrical engineer or one of my one of my disciplines but i didn't apply it to biological life forms. I was using it in resonance circuits, tank circuits, uh, radio transmissions, things like this. Um, we're, not, we're not taught the more important applications of resonance during any of the formal training. It's sort of like doctors, allopathic doctors now, they go through the medical school and they're not taught, they're not trained uh, to learn about nutrition. It's a sort of thing. You, you, they miss out <laughs> the most important part. So I um, went through the formal training, but whilst I was um, doing this, I lost some family members through cancer and other, other illnesses. And I felt helpless. Um, I, being, being so young, you know, you're kind of proud. You know, I'm, I'm a real clever person and everything else. Uh, I hadn't been humbled by other more, more clever peers at that stage, so you know, I thought I could do things. Uh, but I felt so helpless. I didn't have any way to help my family members as I saw their slow decline down. Yes. Uh, and, and so I thought, well, okay, I know, I know about resonance. Why can't biological cells be made to resonate? And I, I started down the path of learning there. And then I discovered Royal Rife, and I realised that this path had been trodden down many years ago, and, and in fact had been refined and proven. And I thought, well, why are we still using poisons and a knife and, and uh, radiation to do these alleged healing? <laughs> Oxymoron, isn't it? Um, yeah. 
where there's other ways and the other ways are better. So I, I looked into the personal history of rural life and I came to understand that not all that we have now is goodness. Things that happened between 1930 and now um, is mostly um, to do with business and political. Um, I don't want to go into those details, but it's sad that uh, for reasons which, to, in my mind, are totally unimportant, but to some people it is. Some people want to be very powerful, have a great income, and all the rest of that. Um, for those wrong reasons, um, we've now got the system we have. So I thought, well, let's see what we can do. So I, um, I copied the machine that Royal Wife had made and I applied it to uh, several people within my clinic and saw, had, saw remarkable results. Uh, now, the electronics and the methods from 1930 um, it's hard to apply them now because many of the components are unavailable, like the 812 valve tube and others. But, but, and so you can't do it in volume. So I decided, well, I'm going to make a machine that is the modern day equivalent. And I'm going to adhere as close as possible to the original machine. So I did. I designed our Spooky Central which is a plasma device, the same as the original, doesn't use a carrier frequency, the same as the original, it can apply the frequencies directly. And um, that has proven itself time and time again to be head and shoulders above other devices that are available in the market. Um, but very importantly, you know, it gives power to the person. When you are sick, and you're, 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 you're you're anguished, the, the, the worry, not being able to sleep because all you, you've handed your life to trained medical professionals. I forgot to add the word registered in there. <laughs> um, but what about yourself? If you're sick with a cold, you take a glass of orange juice, right? That's kind of a becoming a self-doctor. What we have done is we've advanced it further so you can really uh, throw some big guns at the problem. And you can see spontaneous remissions in diseases which you didn't think are possible. Uh, like if you get an influenza, you know you're going to be down for about a week, some of the time in bed. If you're unlucky, most of the time in bed trying to sweat it off and having plenty of fluids. But I've seen that disappear in the course of 15 minutes through the use of a plasma device. Contact device works as well, quite well. We'll get into that a little bit soon, a little bit later. Um, so we've got devices that can talk the talk and walk the walk. But more importantly, I guess, is that we've made it so it's available to the people by making the, keeping the price down as much as possible. From the very start, our focus has been on solutions. It hasn't been on creating a, a multinational company with big profit margins, shareholders that dictate how the company is going to be run. Um, when we, for, to illustrate this, when we, when we design a device, we design it the best we can, and then we think, well, it comes down to what price should we charge? Um, we charge the cost price for us, plus a margin to allow us to do our charity work and basically survive. We don't add this 500% plus um, profit margin, which to the best of my knowledge, all the other people do. There are other, other alleged rife manufacturers, but you look at the prices and the prices aren't reflected in the, in the build of the product. The Price is really a reflection on the mentality of the people that that own the company. So when I lost my family members, I thought, no, no, I'm going to make a change. And that was many years ago, but my thoughts have not changed 
one little bit since then. Uh, I'm always trying to find the best solutions at the best price. It's become harder due to uh, the current situation. There is a, um, a nasty thing that's circulating around the world and it's created a shortage of electronic components. The result of uh, that is that the prices have gone through the roof. We've got a generator, a frequency device, Elena, which is the, the big brother to the blue little baby you have behind you. It's called Generator X. Now, we came to a point where we could not find some components. We could find a replacement for these components within the generator. These are like, you know, the uh, microprocessors, capacitor resistors, transistors. Well, that's, that's what components are. The things that are inside the electronics, when you open it up, it looks kind of, you see all these beautiful colors there. <laughs> we had difficulty buying some of these beautiful colors. So we came to, we were forced into a decision. Should we make a small downgrade to use components which are on the market already? Or shall we upgrade it, bite the bullet, make it more capable? Um, it would be more expensive because when you upgrade the components, you know, they're bigger, stronger, faster, like $6 million man, but they are more expensive. Um, we decided to upgrade. And the cost, our cost was $90 to put one extra computer inside it. So it's got five computers instead of four <laughs> and other bits and pieces. Um, but we kept the increase as minimal as possible. Um, so customers can get the benefit. I think it's $70 more that we charged. It cost us $90 more in the components, but we charged 70 because we are driven by our morals. <laughs> if we, we are of the belief that if we ever, ever one time swindled our customers by swindling, I mean, overcharging, when we die, we won't be going to where we want to go. So we are really, really fixated on providing honest solutions to disease. So this is sort of like where it's why we decided to build or why I decided to um, you know, build equipment, uh, form the company. Then we have become larger because people are realizing that spooky is different. <laughs> <laughs> really different. Um, we, you know, with all our customer support, and, and maybe they can stumble onto a website and they can see all the charity work that we do. Every product that we sell, people, the, our customers, um, without them even knowing, they contribute to the charities. It's like, you know, and we use the customer's name to pass the blessings to them when, when the products are sold. But the customers, we don't promote this. We don't, we don't. We don't stand in front of the camera with a large check, oversized check, saying, hey, we donated $500,000 you know, to so-and-so. That's, 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 um, that's grandstanding. We don't do that. We, we, don't, have, we don't suffer from excessive pride. <laughs> uh, and we're certainly not ego-driven. Um, so I can, I can state that we are now the largest rife machine manufacturer in the world. But it doesn't make us feel more important. It just means that, okay, we're very happy because we're achieving something and helping more and more people. But that's it. That's it. No, nothing more, nothing less. Because you come from a place from the heart and for helping humanity, you know, service to others. Yeah. So how can you want to make you know huge profit from it it's not nothing to do with with what you do with who you are no, and uh, uh, yes absolutely your your main your 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 i would say your complete motivation is to help humanity because you've you've been suffering from family members you know um passing and uh you don't want humanity to suffer like this. You come from a place of the heart. And I really, really admire uh, what you're doing. So, uh. Well, I'm finding there's a bit of a global movement 
more and more people are joining Spooky and learning the equipment and themselves becoming training. So they're passing the love forwards and it's snowboarding. So it's, it started off just with me. Then it became two and then maybe 12. And then it's just, well, there's, the, the world is full of beautiful souls, Selena, really yeah. saturated. Yes. And many of them th- are wondering, what can I do? How can I make a big change? We're all going to die. We're all going to have the last moments of death. And are we going to look around at our beautiful home, our beautiful car, beautiful things that we're going to um, let go of as we pass over? Are we going to leave something, a legacy, leave something really big? Yes. And the the latter is what we've decided to do. We've... um, got a massive Facebook group, Spooky to Rife for Life. You know, Elena, we didn't even start that. We didn't open up that. It's one of our users. We didn't even know this user. And then we just found it. And then we contacted him. And honestly, Elena, you've never met such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful person. He says, yeah, I started it. And then, then he's, he had a few thousand people quite early on and, we, the way he talks is just casual and, oh, yeah, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't um, think what he's done is special. He's, he's just done it because he thought it's a good thing to do. And it was a, it was a brilliant thing to do. <laughs> but we have so many people like that as well. People, we've got a forum um, where people come on and uh, discuss and, and uh, ask for help. We have moderators there who reply and uh, help keep the forum alive. All of them are underpaid, they work for nothing, and they, they do it. I, I joke with them. I tell them, you know, I pay them with spooky points, <laughs> which, which in a physical sense is nothing. You, don't, you can't cash them in. <laughs> and in a spiritual Wait. sense, they're, they're, they're priceless. <laughs> a question I have, why the name Spooky? The very first accessory for our frequency generating device, the generator which is behind you now, was a device that could send informational frequencies remotely. I could apply a frequency here and treat you, even though you're, you're all the way in sunny Ireland and I'm over in overheating China, or thousands of kilometers away. I can treat you as if you're sitting right next to me. How does that work? Is is it using quantum um, technology? Well, um, it is. Um, yes. I would need to have a sample of your DNA. Ah. The quantum entanglement between the molecules within the DNA and your body is the link that we use for sending information. This is, you know, everything you say, it's groundbreaking for me because I, you know, um, I don't know if you, you, you know about me a lot because I am in contact with beings from, um, other star systems and they use some technology and they say to me, they tell me about these things that DNA is frequency and that once you have the right, the every, every DNA, every, um, type of DNA has its own frequency, its own frequency key. And if you know it, you can be in resonance with it. And it's it totally corresponds to what you say. And you can do it. And, oh, please, continue explaining this. <laughs> like, oh, wow. I, was, I, was, I was enjoying what you're saying. It's true. It's not a coincidence that the double-stranded helical DNA strands are a scalar antennae. If you want to design yes. a scale of DNA, this is what you do. Yes. And yes. Um, yes. But the, this, this accessory exploits the fact that there's a link between your DNA, it can be anywhere, and yourself. In fact, there's um, Indians, I think it was the Indians in America, they used to bury their fingernails when they cut them to prevent their enemies from cursing the nails. So they, they, they knew more than us <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years ago. 
Um, it wasn't me that made this discovery, actually, you know, truth be known. <laughs> it was a good friend of mine. Well, we became good friends. He, he was an acquaintance who became a very good friend, uh, Johan Sigmund. He was in South Africa. So you know, we were all over the globe. And um, he and I, for want of a better word, we argued for about a year. I was with my technical training, of course, it's nonsense. I think it's just the uh, placebo effect that's making it work. And so I was working under his instructions, building remotes and then testing them. And every time I'd say, aha, no, nothing, I've proven you wrong. <laughs> and he was, he was a really, he was a beautiful man. He was, he was blessed with patience, more patience than I'd ever have. He says, no, John. You haven't done this right. Try doing this. Okay. And so I tried different things. Ah, no, still not working. Oh, but you didn't do this right. And so we go down, down, down. And um, then I did replicate his successes. And I went further than that in refining it. So in the end, he, um, the remotes which I was using were... Um, more advanced than what he had been using in the past. So in gratitude, I sent him a box full of my remotes. <laughs> he had he used to do um, he used to raise pigeons. So when they got a disease, he'd take their feather and put them in the remote. And he did things which scientifically were impossible mm. until you open your mind a little bit and allowed the truth to enter. Yeah. Now, you're talking about a connection with, uh, with other civilizations and other yes. planets. Now, a scientist will listen to you and think this is absolute nonsense. But when science is struggling with explaining simple things like what is time? What is time? Or what is distance? And then you, um, scientists in their wisdom discover that there's wormholes. So all of a sudden you can go from one... Uh, you know, you can travel vast distances in space within a short distance, yeah. which means a short time. Yeah. If you go fast enough, time goes backwards. So what is time? Scientists still cannot give an answer. So you are communicating. I've got no doubt that you are. But, and how are you doing it? Maybe science will discover in thousands of years' time maybe millions of years' time. Now we're still walking around with our eyes closed, believing that science has the answer to everything. Yeah. And if science has the answer to everything, why are they still discovering things? And until they discover these things, they poo-poo it. How can something have dual state? How can a cat be alive and dead until you look at it in that box? How can a molecule spin in both directions until you capture one state? It's not, it, it defies common sense, but only to our current level of understanding and maybe to our level of uh, comprehension. Maybe the human brain isn't large enough to really fully comprehend everything that's around us. But I think that will be closer to the truth. <laughs> but it's a shame, you know, how science, the courses, they're not open. They're closed. They build on knowns. They don't really peek into the unknowns. If something sounds crazy, they won't investigate. What you have said sounds crazy. What I have personally experienced, to me, seemed crazy. Not only with what I do within Spooky, but other, other things as well. Uh, two, two, three days ago, I walked through a stone wall a solid stone wall that had been uh, only opened three times. I wanted to see what was inside. I walked through and I saw what was inside, but I didn't do it in a physical room. So when you're talking about communicating, many of the ideas that I have, I know aren't from me. I'm like a, an empty vessel that will receive the information, maybe because the source of this information knows that I'll do something with it and push it as far as I can for humanity. Maybe that's why 
I'm given this information. But I never question it. I never think, no, that is not possible, and stop pursuing it. I don't, that doesn't even enter my mind. Mm. I am an adventurer. I'm an explorer. I want to explore what's out there. So sometimes when I'm meditating or in a meditative state, which is actually quite common, you know, it's not formal meditation, but quite often when I'm in the twilight zone, half asleep, I'm thinking not in my lower thoughts, but in my higher thoughts. And wow, there comes that nugget of information, which couldn't have come from me because quite often it's a, it's a real curveball. I would never have thought of this. And um, I think, okay, yes, I'll try it. It's not, my logical self, my, everything I've been taught and trained, everything will, will say to me, no, don't bother us. It's not going to work. But when you think, when you're balancing in the scales of reason, what is the cost of trying? Yes. And what is the reward of succeeding? Like this That's plasma right. device that we made. Um, I was told it's not possible to design a plasma machine which doesn't have a carrier frequency. A carrier frequency is just a way of lighting the plasma tube. But Royal Rife didn't use a carrier frequency. So I was determined not to use a carrier frequency. I didn't know how. I didn't know the best way how. And that came to me as a gift, the solution. And I thought, that's not going to work. But what is there to lose? And you want everything to gain. And so I tried. Wow. And so you, uh, you, you, you receive information um, from somewhere. That's very interesting. I think that, I think, Elena, most people do, but it's the higher logical thinking that blocks it. You know, before you start school, you can have uh, vivid dreams, ideas. Nothing is impossible. Then you go to school and then you're taught that some things are not possible. And you're taught the rules of the world, the rules of life, the rules of everything. And you're taught how to, you're, you're taught the skill sets for a job. <clears throat> so I've been, ta I've been taught how to um, earn a living by working for somebody and then pay off a mortgage and the yeah. normal things. Um, but more important is the spiritual quotient, the morale quotient, the emotional quotient, not just the IQ or the other cues, I would say are more important than the IQ. So you can learn to listen to yourself, listen to within, and then you can listen without. Yes. And when you do become receptive to everything that's around you, magic happens, things that can't be explained. I've experienced things since really opening up. I've experienced things which no sane person would admit to. A tradition in China is to burn money and, and um, gold. They're fake for ancestors to use in their afterlife. We went, uh, and we frequent temples quite a lot. We went to a temple where they had a massive one, a huge one, and there were maybe two, three hundred people standing around us watching. Out of the fire walked a spirit. It, to my eyes and mind, it was as clear as anything. It was probably three times our size. It walked to my right hand side, looked at me, went like this, and kept on walking away. It was a clear, um, vision. It was now maybe this is the first time I've mentioned this on the internet. I'm not expecting people to think that um, that it's real. To to understand what I'm saying might need a different uh, need more years in, in other areas, um, and I certainly don't hallucinate or anything. 
but I can, I've learned to see things which other people are trained not to see. <laughs> and I think that's helped us with our development of our equipment. It's, I'm not saying that it's not scientific, it certainly is. And most days I'm pouring over component data sheets, spec sheets, and uh, running simulations, emulating components, doing the hard yards. But at the very early stages, when you when it's the creativity side. Before you create something, you've got to envision it. And you need to have um, some sort of idea of how it's going to be achieved. And so it's a combination of um, the university degrees that I have, plus having an open mind, truly open mind, that has brought about these amazing devices that we have. Yes, so science, as we determine this, this term, is something that, is, that has been too much restricted into yes. certain field. What, what we need to put back into this name science is consciousness. Do yes. you agree with that? Consciousness is the main, it's crucial to me. On YouTube, there are uh, a video, uh, I'm almost certain it's been important now because I tried to find it and I, I couldn't. A group of four monks were um, giving sacred um, sutras uh, sing these um, sacred sutras to a man who had uh, a kidney stone this man was in an MRI was it a kidney stone? no it was a tumour, it was a cancerous tumour and the MRI you could see the tumour shrinking, shrinking and then disappear this is in real time it took was over the course of about 10 minutes. It wasn't the vibration in a, in a scientific sense alone that did this. A lot of it was in, intent and focus. But how on earth do you design a scientific experiment that proves those two, intent and focus? You just can't. But in a physical sense, it removed that tumour. Yes, it's because uh, the technology that is available on Earth at the moment hasn't developed enough to create devices that are able to record certain natural um, phenomena or such as what you described. It's not because we can't record it with the devices we have available now at this point in time in our evolution that it doesn't exist or that it's nonsense. It, it's there. It's amazing natural uh, things that we can do with consciousness, with our body, or with a lot of things. It's just that we will soon develop machines that are able to record it and call it science. That's, don't you think? Absolutely. In fact, it's, um, I know in China they've got quantum communications. I, I think America has as well. Instantaneous communications between two points using the science behind our first accessory. When we designed our spooky remote, a quantum communication was ridiculed. Now it's been heavily invested in by countries because they realize that this is a secure means of communica communications it's faster than the speed of light and it's secure it's unhackable and you uh -huh. are asked uh, unhackable because there is no linear uh -huh. linear transfer of information so you cannot hack it that's and right that that's how I communicate with a, a person who is from another world because I have a device in my head that's been put there yes. that is in quantum uh connection resonance resonance sorry with something he has as well and he can be at the other side of the galaxy it's like if he was uh, talking to me next to me because mm -hmm. there's no linear transfer of information so i want to no, that's that. right uh it, it takes a a while to understand that um communication with entanglement isn't 
transferring from one, uh, let's say, say hello, and then the hello, 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 like yeah. sound. It's instantaneously between the molecule. Yeah. So that's how that works. So mm, uh, we, we, we've, um, we've had amazing success. In fact, um, I'll tell you a little story. Yes, about four about four years ago, Speaker Remote, I've already mentioned it was our first accessory. We decided we decided to try and improve it. That, that sounds nice and easy, but it was actually quite difficult um, because the original remote was very good, uh, and also we had to find some way of measuring it. And there's there is no scientific device that measures quantum entanglement still. So we asked for volunteers throughout the globe to uh, send in their DNAs. If they are sensitive, if they can, you know, a speaker remote's been out for a while, so a lot of people have their remotes. Some people can feel the frequencies and get the chills down the spine, really feel the change, the effect of these frequencies. We asked for volunteers. We got 20 seven volunteers, there's about 27. And uh, from there, we designed an experiment where we had seven different remotes. And we put the person's DNA into each one. And we use a frequency which has been shown to be easy to be felt. And we asked the person, how does it feel now? And we might have nothing running. And then they tell us how they feel. This is in a Zoom meeting like we are doing now. And then try another remote to turn, you know, put the frequencies on this one. Any change? Do you feel anything? So we made a large table. We discovered that quite a few people couldn't feel the frequencies because at times they felt something when you went apply the frequencies. But we found five or six people that were very sensitive, very, very sharp. They could, we'd, we'd, have, we'd say, okay, how do you feel now? And they'd say, we feel nothing. And it wouldn't be running. And then when it's on, oh, I feel that. But this one couple in particular, when I say couple, is actually a mother-daughter combination. I guess the, um, the ability is genetic. In Japan, oh, if you ever... Um, we're skeptical about the, um, the practicality and you know whether the remotes work. You should have sat through their the, the experiment when they were on. Do you feel nothing, anything? No. When they said no, I turn it on. There's no click. It's go. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, I do. They apologise because I thought they had they'd missed it. But at the very moment I turn it on, they they, they give this jump, and we we weren't moving. This person off screen would be doing the turning on and turning off. We, you, so in the end, they were the they were the, the key players. We still used the other other three, uh, just to make sure that it wasn't just a one off. And we tried different combinations of setups, and and then we were down to two. We we're thinking which one is the best between these two, and uh, the. Japanese woman and her daughter, they were separate. They'd let, one would leave the room. We had to rely on trust with this. Um, they said one, one remote, or the mother said one remote felt like, oh, gosh, it's such a long time ago. It's like this. I won't say it verbatim. One is like flowing water. One is like colourful flowers. And then and another um, setup, we had both a combination of these two methods. And, and she described it like rain going through flowers. Like, are you kidding me? She, she described it in visual terms, exactly the combination that we were using. Like, she might as well have been sitting with us, watching us, looking at these coils, which are off the, off the camera. Now, her daughter described things um, in a different way. I think it was through warmth. And so the way that she described it, um, it's different, but it's still the same thing. You know, one way, then the other way, then the combination of the two. We thought far out. So we, we still didn't know the best between these two. 
And so we ran several programs. And um, finally, after painstaking weeks of, of experiments, we came up with an absolute optimum setup for the modern remotes that we have. So they're the ones that we sell now. We, we know they work amazingly. We, we're, we're very confident that they are the best that you can possibly have for remote treatments. Uh, but that, that was, uh, that was we, we thought at the onset it was going to be easy and the only hard thing would be to find people that could fill them, fill the frequencies. Uh, normally when you have, run the remote, you don't feel anything, but you notice that you feel healthier over a period of time because it's attacking the pathogens that are making your life miserable. But um, what we um, realized at the end of the experiment was that there's just so much, so much that we, we kind of, we're, we're, we're lucky in, with, our, with my friend in South Africa and, and getting a device that worked, but to advance that to the next stage is so difficult. There are some setups that we thought would be excellent, but it was actually harmful. It actually caused irritation within the body. We learned through um, these experiments that it's important to almost covertly send the frequencies to your body. So your body doesn't push the frequencies away. It receives the frequencies and, rec and, rec and, and sees the frequencies as itself rather than fight and oppose. You know, when you're listening to music, it can be very beautiful music. You turn the volume up too high and it becomes irritating and annoying. Yes. It's, it's like that. We could increase the power of the remote. That was actually not too difficult. But then the body pushes back. This on a cellular level, it pushes back. Yes. And you don't want that. You want you want things to be beautiful, balanced, tuned, and then sending it in so they you send the you know the, the frequency ninjas into the body so they can they can kill all the all the things that are making your life miserable <laughs> and you can start living a real life again. Yeah, so that was that was a real amazing journey of discovery. We we had to refabricate other when we discovered what was really good for remotes, we had to then make other setups to prove to ourselves it's the optimum. So we discovered a lot during those times, and that was that was so amazing discovering that a couple in Japan, you know, we were treating them in China. Again, distance doesn't really matter. We had their fingernails and you know, and little uh, envelopes, and just put them inside the speaker remotes to discover those two and realize how true. If a scientist was watching over our shoulder, that'd be really. <laughs> Well, you know, what, what is going on here? We can't measure it, we can't see it, can't smell it, taste it, but it's happening. Yeah, the, the, sorry, but the, this, this science and this technology is something that is um, retained from us to access because, you know, there are not well-intentioned um, people in power who rather make profit for from us sick and you know what I mean so I know exactly what you mean mm -hmm. it's, it's one reason why it, it's so hard to get some people to accept that there are other ways of treating a hundred years ago they had acupuncture they had um, sound therapy light therapy all sorts of these therapies what do we have now we've only got one which is ingesting poisons you know poisons of varying degrees <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, everybody and knows how, what we're talking about. <laughs> how did we get here? We've got to wake up and realize, well, hang on a moment. Let's, yes. let's look back and see what they did then and, and reapply it and, and then maybe improve on it or use it as it is. Singing yes. bowls have such healing ability. Why don't we use them? Why, why, why does it have to be done clandestinely? Why can't it be in the open? Yes, that, that's that's what humanity is rediscover, rediscovering the power of healing by natural way. You know, 
like healing by distance also through consciousness. I know some people who do that. Uh, I'm actually working with um, someone who's named Dan Willis. is um, on the Vogel crystals. Uh, Marcel Vogel, Dr. Marcel Vogel uh, studied the, the, how consciousness can really focus into a crystal and, uh, you know, uh, heal or modify the, 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 the tissues. So if there's many, many things and frequency, I mean, the med beds are starting to be implemented. Uh, and this thing, I think every everyone needs to know about that. That's why you're here. <laughs> you're talking to me. I want everyone to know. So, yeah, tell me more about that. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'll show you a presentation, but before... I do. I'll ask, I'll, I'll put this question to you. Yes. If you have a disease, if you have a disease and it's become a chronic disease, you've worn it for a number of years, what would you rather do? Would you rather take something that controls the condition? Doesn't doesn't get rid of it. It controls the condition. So you can live a happy life. Or do you want to be to do um, to do something which will remove this disease, so uh, your life becomes really joyous, yeah. and and so it's not a continuous treatment. It's like maybe a month, two months of doing something different, but it's gone, and then you don't have to control anything. There's nothing to control. I mean, it's kind of an obvious answer, isn't it? I guess any sane person would say, well, let's get rid of it. Let's evict these um, pathogens that are, which are lowering our standard of living. Yeah. Things like even things which you wouldn't normally associate with pathogens like arthritis are caused by pathogens in the joint. So if you can remove them, then all of a sudden you can, well, not all of a sudden, but slowly you'll, realize, hey, I'm actually walking without pain. I can take a step with a bounce. Remember like 10 years ago when you didn't have these pains and these pains slowly come in. Pains aren't a natural part of life. You should not suffer from any pain. If you are, it's your body telling you something is wrong. That's now, if you, if you control that, either by pain reduction medication or whatever, you haven't done anything to solve the problem. You haven't put the fire out. When you don't put the fire out, it's going to grow bigger and bigger until it becomes an inferno. Yeah. If you can get it early, then it's still just a match. It's the best time. But quite often you don't realise until it gets a little bit large. Then it can get to a stage where you've got to go under the knife, Get poisoned, have it radiated, or something. Yeah. It's always best to get things as early as possible. When there's a fire in a forest, they want to put it the fire out as soon as possible. They don't want to yeah. control the fire with, you know, and just and allow the fire to continue. Mm. Um, the reason why disease is controlled now is because of a business model. It's better to have an income over a period of years rather than lose a customer <laughs> after, after um, a short period of time. That's a very, very bad business model. We're actually pushing customers away <laughs> if you really, really resolve the health problems. But things, most issues, certainly the ones that aren't hereditary, can be resolved. And even ones that are hereditary can be suppressed through the use of frequencies. Yes. I totally I'd like to show you. <laughs> I'd like to show you a presentation. Please, uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. So, uh, let's have a look. Share let's screen, share. and yes. we'll send you to. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Yes. See it. Yes. You can now see our software running. Um. To send frequencies to your body, you need to know what frequencies to send. Now, when you start spooky for the first time, 
the spooky software. The software controls that blue box, which is behind Elena, not that particular one, it'll be your, your one. <laughs> or it will be its bigger brother, our Generator X Pro, uh, which is faster and got other functions as well. Yeah, it's our beautiful Spooky too. Oh, I didn't actually answer why we call ourselves Spooky, did I? Okay, I'll answer that now while I'm in this little small box in the corner of the screen. Einstein termed the phrase spooky action at a distance when he was investigating quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement was the, was the, uh, the way that our first accessory um, works, our spooky to remote. And so we used the term spooky we were spooky for a while until we made huge changes in the generator, which is the one that you're holding now. Before then, we had a <laughs> we had a generator which was very primitive. It was before this one, though, Elena. We had a plastic generator that was very basic, and we decided no, we're going to call ourselves Spooky Two because we, we've now risen. It's not times two; it's to the power of two. So we've now called ourselves Spooky 2. So spooky action at a distance, squared. <laughs> okay, now we've got a generator. We've got our Spooky 2 remote connected to the output. Well, we, we assume that you will have. And the generator is connected to the computer. Okay, this is what we see. Now, what can we do? Well, most people, when they are unwell, would know what they want to, um, we will we'll know what is wrong with them. Let's say you've got influenza. Influenza, just, you can just type in a few letters and you do a search. Now, these, these are called presets. Presets contain frequencies and generator settings. Okay, you're sick, you've got influenza. Uh, you can choose any of these frequencies. If you choose the, uh, let's see, you've got influenza A, B, or C. In brackets, there's SS. That's for our scalar device, Spooky Scalar. R means remote. So you can apply influenza A, B, or C for remote. I've clicked on influenza A. We're going to kill, we're going to knock the socks off the influenza, which is inside my body now. Then I click on control because I want to control the generator with the preset that I've selected. I choose a generator. This is just in test mode. So it shows every generator is a box. So in test mode, it's got a lot of boxes. Spooky 2 can, can directly control all these numbers of generators. It's actually 126 generators, or 127. I'm going to overwrite the generator, which means I'm going to send this information to the generator and overwrite anything that's inside it. Now click on a generator. Now I'll move this to one side. The generator has appeared there. Here's my influenza A virus. All you need to do now is click start. And it's away. What the generator is doing now is running these special frequencies, which will kill or disable the influenza A virus that's in your body. That's all you really need to know to run the software. Search in the presets, find what you want. Maybe it could be something like Acne. These are all the Acne programs. These ones here, Elena, these are DNA programs. These contain frequencies which talk directly to your DNA and have been scientifically derived. We can use that for acne. We choose the R one, 
which is the remote. We go back to the control. Generator number two was running the influenza A. I'm now going to overwrite it with the acne. There we go, acne up here. All you do is click start. Because Spooky 2 has been around for a long time, there are more advanced features. But what I've shown you now is all you need to know to very effectively use the software. You can experiment and tweak and learn more, but um, you don't need to, not at the beginning. Let's say you've, you suffer from brain fog due to viruses in your body. You can find the presets, which are for brain fog, run them for a month. There's no harm to run them continuously. Because in Spooky Remote, you're treating yourself wherever you are. You can do your shopping, you can do your work, play, travel, and still treat yourself with the frequencies. You don't have wires joining you to any device. After your holiday, you come back and you suddenly find that you can think clearly because your brain fog is gone. Then you can go deeper and maybe think, well, actually, I've had a sore left knee for about five years now. I'm going to run some rheumatism presets. So you look for rheumatism. Now it's American spelling, so let's have a look. Oh, arthritis, for instance. Oh, there, that's right, that's right. Good, good, arthritis. Thank you. Let's try that. That's easier to spell, too. And there we go. Now, see, there's the DNA ones. There's mycoplasma arthritis. Arthritis. Arthritis, yes. Arthritis. Yeah. arthritis and arthritis. This is regular arthritis. There's rheumatoid so, arthritis as well. You, you must really know what you have exactly precisely because it's very precise frequencies, isn't it? Absolutely. R-H-E-U. So oh, okay. have it. the arthritis you've been told by your doctor um, while he has a smile. Oh, no, he might even have a look of concern on his face, even though he's only seeing you for 30 minutes and will forget you once you've gone. He'll say, you've got rheumatoid arthritis. There's nothing you can do about it because it is hereditary. Sorry about that. Please play at the desk. Okay, well, you go home, you're un upset and angry. You're upset because of the bad news and angry because there's nothing you can do about it. But here, I'm going to show you there is something you can do about it. Okay, I'm going to choose the rheumatoid arthritis DNA program for the remote. Look at that. It's actually caused by gamma herpes virus 4. That's virus has been proven, even within scientific circles, to be a causative pathogen for rheumatoid arthritis. And look at all the different strains, all the different flavours of this nasty virus. Yeah, look at that. The Parma virus B19, only the B19 strain was found as well. So all the strains of the B19. All yeah, the yeah. pathogens that cause it. Okay, let's go. We've suddenly got the cannon loaded. Let's fire it. I've overwritten the generator by clicking there and selecting the generator. Let's do it. So within seconds now, I have started a program which will hit and kill all the viruses which cause rheumatoid arthritis. And it will run and run and run until I stop it. Okay, so this frequency program will reach out, we treat to all the the pathogens that were on the list, all of them. Yes. All okay. Wow. All of them. It it does this by targeting the DNA within the pathogen. Yeah. Because the pathogen, because DNA is a scalar receiver, it's an antenna in aerial, it will receive this information through quantum entanglement. Magic. And it works. 
and the really cool thing is all these frequencies, all these programs, until we came along, and even now, actually, people are charging something like $15 for each one of the DNA frequencies. Um, now, uh, what I'll do, I'll just refresh the database because I, I stopped it prematurely. All these DNA frequencies are loading. Spooky2 has got the world's largest database. And it's not just through repeat programs. In fact, we delete all the repeat programs. Every program is different from the other. I believe it's over 60,000 programs. If each program was $15, which is what the commercial DNA frequency sets cost, you can, you can imagine just how expensive it would be to, <laughs> to buy and run each one of those programs. Okay, 59,628 frequencies. Okay, each one of these is a virus, a pathogen, a fungus, parasite, bacteria. It's just, if you have, if you know what you're infected with, you can select it directly from here, save $15 and run them. It's absolutely free. For these serious conditions, uh, like the pandemic, which is coming, which is going around now, we can also choose that. And we update those every week. The frequencies for those are only the circulating strains, not the ones which have become extinct. Mm. So you can choose um, the programs that I have them here in the presets. You can choose the um, whatever um, condition that you have and run the preset. If you're using contact mode, Elena, where you've got TENS pads connected to your body, you choose the contact version, which is a C in brackets. Okay. Uh, and then run that one. Now, I've, I've actually got a presentation uh, prepared. Um, can I show you the presentation that's briefly describing um, the very beginnings, explaining Royal Raymond Rife, his devices, and, and a bit about us as well? Please, okay. please, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, and um, you will uh, talk about all the different... Uh, devices and accessories that go together uh, afterwards. Sure. Well, we're good to go. <laughs> yes, let's go. So a lot of people, uh, uh, this may be very new and confusing. Um, where in fact it is. <laughs> Especially if you're new to the concept of frequencies killing things. But we'll see how we go through this, um, through this presentation. Okay, Spooky 2, Rife Machine. There we are. Hmm, I wonder if... Uh, I'll see if I can have us in the corner there. Okay, what is... Oh, gosh. I'm trying to squeeze, move us away from the very corner so that... Yeah, okay. Um, now, a Rife machine is a machine that uses the principles of Royal Rife, who was the scientist I was mentioning earlier. Uh, he discovered that microorganisms can be destroyed simply by using frequencies. This is a photograph of him using one of his microscopes. Um, the photo on the Rife was him with his wife. He was a family man, very driven by science. 1934 is when they did the experiment I was mentioning before. Um, 16 patients, these are terminally ill patients. They were going to die, were um, used within this experiment. I'm, I'm sure they volunteered. I mean, you'd, you'd be grasping at straws, so if there's any chance of survival, people take her. It's this fear that is 
allowed the existing system to, to grow. Now, the committee who provided the patients, um, they, were inst they instructed Dr. Royal Raymond Rife to um, keep very precise logs of what frequencies he used. Their task was to count how many people were, died uh, during the course of this experiment. I guess they were maybe in their mind hoping that they would all die so that it would be ridiculed as methods. But in fact, all but one of the patients had complete remissions after three months. Um, and Dr. Rife, he adjusted his equipment frequencies a little bit and the last person also fully recovered. So in the end, all 16 patients uh, didn't just pass, they passed the flying colours, they no longer had cancer, let alone terminal cancer. Um, and I'm not going to bother about explaining why the machines were investigated further. Just, just I ask our viewers just to use your imagination, okay, you've got one device which is going to take all your business away, or, if, or you can get rid of it and continue. <laughs> okay, now Nikola Tesla, who is another genius, uh, he, his time was just a little bit before Royal Raymond arrived. Um, he was, even today, scientists struggle to understand all those concepts. He, he said, to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Royal Rife, he would use resonance to kill pathogens. Here we have a little boy screaming at the top of his lungs as, as little boys and little girls do. If you hit the right note, a glass um, will shatter. Um, now, if you have a larger glass next to this glass, it will just stand there and not, not vibrate, it won't shatter because the tone of that glass is different. Uh, if you ever dampen your finger and run it around the room of a glass, you can get the natural tone of that glass. If it's a small glass, the tone will be high pitched. If it's a larger glass, it'll be lower. That tone is the resonant frequency. If you replay that tone to the same glass, that glass will start vibrating and will eventually shatter. Okay, now it's not just the uh, medical system that. Um, that is expensive. Most Rife machines are as well. Um, even people that were wanting to use the Rife methods 10, 15 years ago, that even they would be taken for a ride because the equipment was uh, designed to be profitable. It's supposed to, it was designed primarily to line people's pockets as opposed to provide a affordable solution. But I, and then subsequently we, decided to turn everything on its head, become the worst enemies of other Rife, mach Rife machine manufacturers. And believe me, Elena, we've made our fair share of enemies by undercutting their, their prices, but becoming beloved by our users, because suddenly they can afford these machines without having to take out a second mortgage. So we've tried as hard as we could to um, be affordable by everyone. It's not to say that we are um, we cut costs because we don't. In fact, most of our, um, even though we um, are based in China, it's not because China is cheap, cheap manufacturing, we actually import our components from America through Digity, Mouser, and other suppliers, big suppliers that guarantee quality of components. 
So it's expensive to make still. But where it's cheaper is that the margins, we don't take our cost price and multiply it by, <laughs> by 5, 9, 10. We are, we, are, um, we are more honest and we don't do that. We believe that if Royal Rifle was alive today, he'd, he'd be aligned with us. He'd be on our side. He'd want to have a rifle machine in every home. That was his, that was his vision. So what makes up Spooky 2? What are we physically? Well, we've got the software, which we've seen just a little bit earlier. We've got our generator, like the blue one that you've got behind you, Alina. We've got another generator, which is uh, which might be shown in this presentation in a little while. We've got a, um, the little amplifier, which is our Spooky 2 boost. We've got our plasma device. Gosh, I could tell you a whole lot about our plasma device. Um, and uh, I've got different transmission modes, contact, remote, plasma, pulse DMF, and cold laser. And um, gosh, we don't, I don't mention scalar there, but we've got scalar down below in the biofeedback. We've got Generator X Pro, Spooky Pulse, and scalar digitizer. Just a quick explanation about biofeedback. Biofeedback is discovering the frequencies that you need to kill the bad guys inside your body. Now, sometimes we think of a software as the brains behind Spooky 2. It's what drives our equipment, kind of like our, our brain does. The software is and always will be free. All these DNA frequencies and other frequencies that we have, again, will always be free. Even if you don't own anything related to Spooky, you can download the software and you can run it. You can find the frequencies for your condition and you can use it with whatever device you happen to own. As I say, we're not into it for profit, we're into it for health. And so if the frequencies will help you in your path to good health, use them. We don't own frequencies. I don't think frequencies can be owned, even though people do charge for them. <laughs> so that's what Amazing. I encourage people to do. Just, just do it. But if you want to have the best equipment to apply the frequencies, this is what you'll be looking at. These are the two generators that create the frequencies. Uh, your one, Elena, is on the left. It's bigger brothers on the right. The Generator X Pro is two generators built into one. Generator X can also do biofeedback directly, so you can discover the frequencies that your body is screaming for and then subsequently apply them. This is our spooky remote, which works through DNA entanglement. You just connect it to the output of the generator and then you run the frequencies that you need. Yeah, a lot of wires. That's one thing which a problem we've still got is sometimes people think it is complicated and when they see wires that need connecting, plugs that need plugging in, especially if you've got brain fog, it is hard to really know what to do. We have a website called spooky2videos.com. On that website, we have videos that explain in simple terms how to connect your devices up and how to use them to their full potential. What is shown here is the different ways that you can use contact mode. Most people would use TENS pads, which are sticky pads that you can place on your body. There's an internal probe that you can use for places where you can't put the TENS pads, private places. You can use hand cylinders. We just hold them using your hands. And we have our silver impregnated cloth that you can put over your wrist. 
these are different ways you can apply frequencies directly to your body through contact mode. This is one product which always surprises people. Spooky to Scalar. Scalar is very different from other types of frequencies. For a start, the frequencies don't go up and down like most people think of when they think of frequencies, but they're percussion, they're longitudinal frequencies. These two boxes set up a field between the lids. You can place them as shown here, or you can place them at an opposite end, pardon me, of a house. You can have them quite a distance apart. The scalar fill between the lid, between the two lids, can pass through solid concrete, steel, lead, everything. And so you can encompass, you can envelope your entire living area with healing, soothing scalar fields. You can see a cat now lying, <laughs> sitting between the lids. <laughs> cats, cats have got a, an inherent sensitivity. They know what's good for them, and they gravitate yeah. to, the, oh, yeah. to the scalar field. It's quite amazing. We've had amazing results with our scalar device. When we were designing it and developing it, we wanted to get the best as we always try and do. And we had a late stage prototype just ready for production. Um, and a friend approached us and said that she's got metastatic breast cancer and she didn't know what to do. She, she was going through, she had gone through the, uh, the poisoning and uh, radiating. <laughs> stages and they, they didn't have much success. Uh, she said, look, I want to try something different. And I said to her, well, we have this device. It's not complete. It's not ready. And so if you're willing to um, use something which looks a little bit ugly, it, what, it, what didn't look beautiful like these, it was, it was electronically and physically inside it was identical, but it just didn't have the waterproof box and everything else. She was happy with that. So... We gave her our only prototype that we had at that stage. Um, and then we, we had a tour of America. I'm sorry, we didn't go to Ireland. We should have done, but we went to America and we visited four states there to uh, showcase our scalar. And during our first, uh, it was the day before our first conference, she sent a text message. Uh, showing her test results of um, this earlier that day. And the cancer had almost disappeared completely. Wow. And she said, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it wasn't just, this is something which was, could be proven because she was doing, um, she was doing these MRI scans to, to you know, they can measure to, to the fraction of a millimetre, the size of the main tumour and the other, um, other, points around there and so they she could give us numbers to the point something of a millimetre size of the tumour not just oh feeling a little bit better today and not much better now this is proof positive that it does was having an effect and I asked her how is she applying it because there's different things you can do with the scalar you can put uh, mod, uh, substances on the receiver coil and the information from the substance goes through the field in other words, you can mix your a sample of your, your saliva or blood with an with a anti-cancer drug, place that on the coil, and the information of your cancer cells dying is sent through your body, and they, um, through harmony, also die. And she said to me, no, I'm doing nothing. I'm just sitting in the field. Now, the, the DNA that's within our bodies is a double helix scatter receiver. It's designed perfectly to, to receive a scalar field. And so her cells were receiving the, uh, the natural uh, force, life force energy of the scalar field created by these uh, devices. And really, at the end of the day, her body was doing the healing, but this device was giving her the ammunition. 
it was really heartwarming. So we, 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 we did our first conference on a massive high because um, you know, to, to receive this information just the day before. And it, we didn't have any time to prepare a PowerPoint or anything. So we, we did the best we could um, you know, in, in, in spreading the word. So that's, that's our scalar device. Now, there's other scalar devices on the market. They're horrendously priced. Um, truth be known, I don't know the price of our spigotry scaler, but at the time we, we priced it as cheap as possible. And uh, the reason I don't know is that I'm not aligned. I, I'm I'm nowhere. I, I'm I've nothing to do with the sales or promotion or anything like that. I'm a really bad salesperson. I'm really good at engineering, so I do what I'm good at, and I <laughs> I leave. Uh, the other things to the rest of the team. But always, I know that um, the pricing side is the lowest possible. As, um, but all our employees um, are, are not just good employees, they're amazing employees. Every month we, re we release live animals. And, uh, these are animals that were destined for the kitchen table. Our staff are there. To release them, and they they um, send the blessings to the fish. You know, wish them a good life and give them a, that chance that they need. That maybe you know, well, good things always do happen from good actions. This is the kind of mentality the whole company has. It's not just me. And and because the company has got like-minded people, people that aren't that don't, when they come to the office. It's not a job. They're making a positive, big change to humanity, and they're excited. And they all work late in the evening. Sometimes you've got to push them out of the door. <laughs> Come on, you've got a wife, you've got children to, you know, to say goodnight to. <laughs> and they're working on the weekends and that. They're, they're driven. And those kinds of people really... Um, Collectively, Spooky 2 is, is an amazing movement. It's not, we're not just a company, we are a movement. And I think our customers feel this, and they can see this in the products that we have, the support that we have, the training videos, the people that um, have become trainers. They are all driven, and driven by the, the, the fact that Spooky 2 is now big and they're making a big change, and they're, they're now part of this massive movement, and they're excited. <laughs> yeah, this is our placement oh, device. That's interesting too. Now it comes. Oh. We've got two different types of tubes. We've got the long straight tube, and we've got the round tube. The round tube is the a copy of the one that Royal Rife used in his successful clinic treatment, and the machine under it that uh, Spooky Central. That's a as close a copy as we can in 2022 to his original device. I mean, if you can't improve on perfection, what, what are you left with? You're just left with copying, and, and um, this is what we've done. Yeah. Royal Rife was the genius. We're just replicating that and, and bringing it in a form that people can use in their homes. And we've got cold laser, which is a way of using photons to activate the uh, ATM in our cells, the uh, battery in our cells, giving our cells the energy to boost our immune system and return, you know, re restore health just through shining a coherent laser light onto a blood yeah. vessel or a meridian. The ones on the left can go through our nasal passages or into your ears. The one on the left you can wear on your wrist. Through your wrist you've got an artery which passes through and back again. The wrist unit has got different coloured LEDs and lasers, especially okay. tailored to replicate scientific studies that have found optimum combinations 
to detoxify your blood, to remove pathogens in your blood, to prevent your blood from clumping together. You know, we, we, are, we ourselves are sceptical of products that we make. We can design the best thing under the sun, but we've got to prove to ourselves after everything's done that it works. So we have a laboratory here that we can do our tests ourselves. We have done tests using um, our devices. We've proven, so even scientifically, not how Spooky 2 Remote works, but the results of Spooky 2, because we've got uh, cultures on our plate. Um, we've applied frequencies to them by remote, which can be very distant away, and measured the difference between um, a certain culture and um, the uh, standard, the control group. We proved that the remotes worked. We weren't happy with that because, I mean, we were happy, but we knew that we had to go further because people would say, well, of course Spooky 2 are doing this test. Of course Spooky 2 will say that their products work. And so we um, commissioned an independent laboratory. And it's, it's fortunate that we did because this laboratory had um, test devices and microscopes, which were way beyond what, you know, what our pockets could afford. <laughs> and that report, um, we didn't tell them um, what to expect. We told them we wanted to have it as close as possible as a double blind study that even, even the germs didn't know. <laughs> and um, they tested using their chosen pathogens uh, they even used a, a line of cancer cells, which we have got no way of keeping alive. And they came back and proved beyond a doubt that remotes work, <laughs> which is kind of nice to validate. Okay, so that's our yeah, cold yeah. data. They also tested other devices that we have, which, I won't, which isn't in this presentation because it's in our Miramate mm. range of products. Um, if you want, if, uh, I, I have um, I have a question before you, you you go further regarding the plasma, the one just before. How how does that work? On yes, on how do you uh, use this um, practically with? Um, is that remote or contact? How do you do? Uh, well, for best results, you need the tube. It's it's best to have the tube as po as close as possible to your body. So it's okay. either against your skin or against the clothing on your skin. So it's certainly not a remote. Uh -huh. The way it works is through the plasma field. When the tube starts glowing, there's a plasma, which is an ion charge, a, a uh -huh. movement of uh, particles between the two electrodes. You know, it's really amazing. I am, I've got degrees in biology, um, degrees in electronics, electrical, and none of my time was I taught plasma. It was just totally skipped over. Now I realize why, it's because plasma can be used for medicinal purposes, if you like. And I, I kind of figure, well, this is why they don't make it mainstream in the curriculum, because more and more people realize that there are there is a very, very effective way of treating. Of all our devices, spooky plasma is the most powerful for mm. transmitting frequencies. It's head and shoulders above other means of transmission. Its disadvantage, of course, is that you've got to be next to the machine, which is inconvenient. You can do the same, uh, have the same results using spooky remote which is when you can treat yourself anywhere, anytime, but remote will take longer. Okay, so it's the, the plasma field. And do you, so I suppose you can, you apply different, you send different frequencies regarding to what is to be treated. And this will be um, irradiated, as I can say, th through the plasma field. Is that it? Yes. Okay. The, frequency, the frequencies are created 
within the plasma field. Ah, okay. When you're close to the tube, the field is called near field, funnily enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and the near field has got the, um, it's when the waves are percussion, like a scalar wave. And it's when it has the greatest healing effect. Uh, you do have a healing effect at a distance. It, uh, at a distance, it becomes a far field. You'd never have guessed it, it was a near field, far field. And far field works as well, but I guess most people, if they want to have um, good results quickly, mm. they'd want to have the effects of the near field. People have used plasma for removing mold in their home. In that case, it's the far field. And it certainly works. It's a bit ludicrous, really, or sad. But um, when there are other manufacturers that sell their plasma devices, they promote the power of the device and they promote the distance that it can work. They might say it works up to 20 feet, 50 feet. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, that's probably true if you're patient enough. But um, there's two things that most people won't realise if they haven't had formal training. The first thing is the further the tube goes away, the less effective it is. The field strength um, dissipates the square of the distance. So if you move um, one foot further away, is it, or oh, so it's you know it's it's like a, a logarithmic scale. If you go with an, if you move from two feet to four feet, then it's a square of the distance, uh, just different distance between the two. Um, what I'm really trying to say, I, I should use simple terms, shouldn't I? The power drops away very quickly as you go further away. It's still there, but it drops away quickly. You don't really want that. You want to have the most effective means and the most the most honest effective ways to have the tube touching your body or very, very close to your body. Yeah, you get the greatest okay. penetration. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. The round tube has got one electrode on an angle that yeah. makes it so it's directional. If you can envision uh, the ions hitting the angled one, angled at 90 degrees, it'll bounce off perpendicular. I've lost my mouse. There it is. Yeah. It'll bounce off this way. So you, you have that side facing your body, and this will get the greatest effect. Like mirrors, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Plasma coupled with frequencies. It's uh, okay. Wow. And that was our cold laser. There's, we make one product, which is our light pad. Actually, it's not here because it's not a spooky device, I think. It's mirror made. Our Miramate range of products also has cold laser, but it has a light pad, which is, oh, I don't know how many inches, maybe four inches by four inches square block. <laughs> it's got an enormous number of cold lasers in it, including the magical 808 nanometer, which is an invisible laser. That does wonders for uh, joints, healing joints. Um, if your viewers want to have a look at our Miramate range, you just go to Miramate, M-I-R-A-M-A-T-E dot com and have a look at the products there. This is our Pulse DMF device. It's a low power Pulse DMF device. You connect it directly onto your generator. Or should I say coil? Uh, connect that straight to your generator. It's very gentle. You won't hear any sounds. What it does, it creates the uh, soothing, healing, magnetic fields that are conducive to healing within your joints. Okay. Biofeedback, the discovery. We should call it discovery, the discovery of frequencies. Okay, you've got all your Spooky 2 uh, devices or maybe devices, other devices which are frequency-based and you want to know what frequencies to use and you're getting a bit confused because there's frequencies here and frequencies there and you're thinking, which ones are best for you? Well, truth be known, probably none of them are best for you because everyone is affected by different conditions, illnesses, viruses, 
bacteria. So what frequencies are best for you? Well, you can discover those frequencies through these devices. Our spooky pulse is this little square thing here that plugs directly into your computer. And it, on the other end is a clip. You put the clip on your earlobe and it will stand, and then your computer will know what your heart rate is. You then use the generator in contact mode using TENS pads, the sticky conductive pads, to send frequencies through your body. Spooky will change the frequencies on every heartbeat. The frequencies which make your heartbeat race are the frequencies that your body needs. Your body has given a response at the frequencies. Wow. And after the frequencies sweep, you can then apply those frequencies. Wow. There's also a finger attachment, which you can place over one of your fingers, and it'll measure the blood flow through your finger using a special uh, LED. Now, that was our first biofeedback device. It was good, and it is good. It's still, we still sell it. It's not very fast, though. It can't go faster than your heartbeat. It's got to wait for your heartbeat before it changes the frequency again. Mm -hmm. It's excellent for doing things that you'd normally use uh, muscle testing for. If you're familiar with muscle testing, it's your body's physical, biological feedback. It could be your hand, your, the strength of a muscle, pulling, pulling your fingers apart, uh, telling you wh which supplements are good for you, yes, no answers. You can do this with Spooky Pulse. You can connect it to your ear or your finger and then just ask yourself questions. And there's a graph within the software. If the graph goes up, it turns red. That's a no. If it goes down, it turns green. It's a yes. Okay, let's get let's get scientific. Instead of measuring your heartbeat, you can monitor the electrons passing through your body as the frequencies are applied. So you can instantaneously know the effect rather than listen and wait for your body's response. The response won't be then a biolo slow biological response, but more of a physical response. So it's very close to instantaneous. Only Generator X and Generator X Pro can do this. When you connect your body to the generator using the TENS pads, the generator can fly through the range of frequencies very quickly and determine which of those frequencies resonated. This is physically resonated, a pathogen in your body. So the sweep can be in minutes rather than almost an hour. And the accuracy of the biofeedback is incredible. After again the sweep is done, you can you can even set up the software to automatically run the frequencies that are found. Because you know, Elena, when you run a biofeedback and then you run the programs, you run those frequencies. Immediately your those viruses that have died um, are no longer there, but you've got other viruses which are trying to evade the frequencies. And so the, the frequency they've moved to can be slightly different. It's kind of the way things are with, with medication now. You can take a medication and then you get resistant strains multiplying. Then there's several pathogens which don't respond to biotics, antibiotics anymore. It's a similar thing. With frequencies, there's no difference. You apply the frequencies. There's some which try to evade those frequencies. So Spooky can sweep again and hit the, hit the little ones that are running away. There's another thing too. A lot of conditions are um, due to layers of illnesses. It can be one 
main cause, but it can be other smaller causes further down or even a root cause, which used to be large but now has become smaller as the other, other things have grown. You've got to peel, just like the skins of an onion, the layers of an onion, just peel each one down and get the next layer, then get the next layer to you right at the core. Believe me, when you do this, um, you do feel very different. Um, Spooky 2 comes with presets, which does this all automatically. Uh, because Spooky 2 is a complicated system, we try and simplify it as much as possible. We have a preset called Hunt and Kill, which does exactly what the word, what the, what the name says. I love that. It will do a scan, find what we call the hits. The hits are where the frequencies were found to, uh, that would uh, hit the pathogens, run those frequencies three minutes each time, and then automatically do another sweep, and then apply those. And just keep on looping until you hit the stop button. And so it doesn't really matter what name you want to call this disease. Some More often than not, science will tell you we, it's not caused by a virus. What it really means is they haven't discovered which one causes it. It might be that if it's hereditary, it could be that your family line, your genes are predisposed to having this virus. It, it can't kill this particular virus. So that virus grows, multiplies, and then causes this disease, which you have been told is hereditary. <laughs> Yes, it is kind of hereditary, but if you remove this virus, then that hereditary disease is gone. So it's not just a simple story that you may be given in the doctor's room. And uh, so that's our contact mode. There's another, oops, I've got to go back. There's another device we have called the sample digitizer. Now, this is amazing. Boy, this is amazing. You can put drops of blood or saliva. In fact, if you've got a cold or flu, you can put um, nasal discharge or phlegm inside the uh, sample digitizer, close it up, put that connect it to your generator. What that forms, Lena, is a biological capacitor. Your, the substance that's between the plates becomes part of the circuit. Then the generator can determine what the frequencies are of that substance um, precisely without even being connected to the generator. In fact, um, I've used it often for when I have a cold, I, I put some nose discharge in there, yucky, and um, find the frequencies and run them and get better very, very quickly. So medication I haven't taken for a long time. But I, I ran and discovered the frequencies for essential oils, healing essential oils. And, um, you know, I ran the frequencies overnight, several sweeps, so I found out exactly what the frequencies were, and then I entered those into the database of Spooky. So now everyone is, can, can have the healing effects of essential oils even without having to pay a dime or wow. a euro in your side of the world. Um, good, because I entered those frequencies in the database. Free, you don't have to pay, just free. So the sample digitizer, that's another way of finding what frequencies your body needs, not the one that, that programs think you need. You can discover for yourself. And there's even one biofeedback device for our scalar device. You can connect the um, with our sample digitizer plugs into the top of the scalar device. A lot of wires, sorry about that. <laughs> But the generator needs to be connected to the computer so the software can control it. And it, what it's doing there is listening to the changes within the scalar field. Mm. 
it's and it's everything within the field. If a fly comes within the scalar field, the scalar digitizer will see it. That's how sensitive it is. And so you do it in a room which has not too much vermin. <laughs> And just sit there or lie there and relax and uh, let the biofeedback do its sweep and see the results. And then you run the results because our scalar device can also have a generator connected to it. Gosh, you know, we have created a movement with Spooky. Before we came along, people could only have one frequency device on one computer, all of a sudden it's 126. <laughs> and, and there are people out there that have maxed out their computers with, um, with generators, with their system. They call it their spooky rig. And you can see workshops here and there. This one, this photo at the bottom shows our very first generator. It was uh, very primitive and it had to be adjusted manually, but now it's all done through the electronics. Mm. So we've, we've um, provided the tools for people to develop their own treatment systems. It's, there are tools which are almost limitless. For each computer, you can have 126 different people being treated or you know, several people. Quite often, you know, Lena, we've got several problems. You might have sore knees, brain fog, um, sore back, um, um, heart and uh, blood vessel problems, thyroid issues. You might have several conditions and you think well what what can I do? You know, there's so many things. Well we just buy another generator, plug it in, Spooky 2 can then recognize it, and then you just run a different program. And you have one generator for your thyroid, one for your cardiovascular health, one for rheumatoid arthritis, one, you know, you, you can have multiple generators treating one person as you become are healthier, you can then start treating friends and family with the generators that are freed up. You don't need to buy another computer for each generator. You get everything set up the way you want to, then you can, as, as your finances allow, <laughs> buy another generator and uh, plug it in and away you go. Uh, for cost-wise, the blue generator, which is the one that you have, um, that's amazing. It's been around since Adam was a boy, but it's still extremely capable, still well head and shoulders above what other life generators can do. It can run very fast, precise frequencies. Uh, and and it's, um, I think it's still under $100, even though it's costing us <laughs> much more nowadays to the chase. Um, it's, it's a wonderful generator. The uh, Generator X Pro, it's bigger brother. Uh, that one is more capable, it's faster. It has a frequency resolution, which is the number of decimal places, much higher than any other generator out there. It's accuracy, stability um, is, is amazing. It can also run offline. You can load programs into it so it can run without having a computer connected to it. So it's got that ability as well. Yeah. Wow. So we, we've, from the very beginning, we want to provide solutions for needless suffering. And I believe that our devices, our equipment and everything that we have uh, do just that. Gosh, I didn't know we had that photo on that left, on the left there. That was part of my clinic in New Zealand when I had my clinic still operating. I recognise them. I'm pretty sure it is. I added to that later on and moved it 
the computer and the and the power sockets outside, and I filled the four shelves full of um, generators. In case any of your viewers are wondering why I came to China, it wasn't for manufacturing costs or anything silly like that. I, um, I did it because I was effectively through legislation, through regulations, pushed out of New Zealand. There was no way I was going to stop my drive to developing and creating life-giving devices. No rules were going to stop me. New Zealand put up a, uh, a brick wall. So I moved to China. China has got its disadvantages, but the advantages, as I saw them, is that there's so many people here. Authorities don't have time to worry about people that want to uh, create health-giving equipment. And, and China does tend to be quite open for, well, they don't call it alternative medicine. Alternative makes it sound as if it's not so effective. They call it traditional Chinese medicine. So they're more open. Uh, and so they don't see anything wrong with what we're doing. They don't have their large companies here trying to suppress uh, the development of um, machines like how we're doing. And so there's the freedom to create. That's really the main reason why I came to China. That is very good to know. It makes sense. Traditional medicine, yes. So you're totally fitting in <laughs> with what you're doing. Well, that's right. If I if I didn't and if I if I wasn't engaged, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm. I, I I've done my yards with earning money, mortgage over time, and and doing everything just to provide a lifestyle. Mm. Now it's not it's not a sacrifice to give up a lifestyle to follow a dream. It's actually very worthwhile. Um, I know in, in most Western countries, China isn't talked about in a positive in a positive light, um, and I, I I don't see a lot of the the negatives. Okay, um, through my nature, I, I tend to see positives. But what I can say is that there's more freedom here, despite all that you read. There, there is more freedom. Uh, there's other things uh, which aren't so good, but I'm. I, I, um, it's everywhere. Uh, yeah, it is. It's just that I think in Western countries they just hide it better. <laughs> they're, they're more covert, you know. They. It's true, you know. People live in fear. They're they're controlled by fear. Fear because health costs. So they've got to have insurance and they're fearful of getting sick, uh, fearful of where they're going to live because house prices are, going, are so expensive and they've got to spend their entire life paying for something that they can't take with them when they, when they die. Mm -hmm. And the cost of living with food and, and uh, education, the cost of having a child in America, what, $260,000 to you know, raise them up to 16 years of age. If they're lucky, it's probably much more now. It's just crazy, just rolling through fear. Well, I think in China they rule through regulations, yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, they don't rule through fear. Yes. Um, they don't, you know, the cost of living is extremely cheap, as is housing, uh, as is education, as is health. Like if you get COVID, oops, sorry, if you get sick, yeah. <laughs> And there's a Freudian slip. If you if you get sick, um, it's extremely cheap or free. If you have to go and stay in a hotel because you want to be kept separated from the from the rest of the population for whatever reason, I'm sure you can imagine which one it is. The government pays for the accommodation, it pays for food, pays for everything. Uh, so um, it's it's done in a better way, I think, in, in a lot of ways. Again, there's some things which aren't so good. But for the things which are important to me, I like to have the freedom of expression, the freedom to apply things 
Mm. And I, I'm, I'm granted that here, where I wasn't granted that. Uh, people, you know, New Zealand is supposed to be one of the freest, greenest, corruption-free places on the planet. Um, all I can say is, yes, it's, it is pretty green and, and pollution-free. Corruption, um, it's really well hidden, but it's there in droves. It's there. It's just, um, it's just regulated, and beneath the regulation, you'll see it. And I guess other countries would be the same. They're just very clever, and they live through fear. They rule through fear. They're taxed on taxes. Yes. You know, things that just are crazy. You're already taxed because you bought it. You've got to then take you then tax the game for, for you know, ah. Oh. Yes, anyway, it's, yes, fear is, is the way of controlling a population. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so... So uh, everything you you've explained, oh, I'll I, oh, I let you finish your presentation, oh, and I'll ask questions oh. afterwards. Well, this is the home straight. I think it's a single line. Is, you know, we started off with this mission, and we will continue with this mission. Our mission is as long as we are above ground. Um, our mission is to eliminate all illness and needless suffering. Our vision is to empower people to take, to take control over their own health and live long, healthy, fulfilling lives filled with happiness and joy. It's one thing to extend lives, but in doing so, maybe extending the days that you're suffering. I don't believe, and we don't believe, that suffering is part of life. And there are answers, and we aim to empower people both through education and through the means of applying. We have uh, websites like speakertovideos.com. We go and watch these videos both on how to use the speaker to equipment, but also how to resolve illnesses in general. We have speakertoreviews.com, which goes into specific ailments. Let's say you have a, um, a hypoactive thyroid, you can search for that and see it how other people have managed to uh, resolve that problem. Uh, and our value, we value love, compassion, and honesty over profit. We're serious about this, Elena, deadly serious. We have, uh, to the point of, we have um, donated hundreds of thousands to other charities, We've registered our own charity. We support the likes of children because they are future. The likes of old people, um, people in between, people that are sick, people that require education. We donate books, clothing. We look further than that too. We help build hospitals. We help humanity through the environment and through animals animal protection, animal care. So we're serious about it. We don't go home at the end of the day thinking, great, we've made something which is going to lie in our pockets, make us a little bit richer, we can buy a flash car or, or whatever. We go home thinking we have changed people's lives more. We've now made it so that... Um, so that more people will not suffer. That, that is our drive. If we make obscene profits, we're doing something wrong. We've had a bunch of, we wouldn't be able to live with ourselves. You know, um, I've been in, a, in the rut. I've been locked into the cycle of material reward. Since moving to China, I haven't earned one RMB, which is the equivalent of a dollar, euro. Uh, it's, um, as, as a foreigner, which I am, <laughs> something I'm still coming to terms with, um, I can't earn money. Um, so it doesn't worry me, but it doesn't worry me in the slightest. I'm married, I, I, I you know, Please, could I have some money for 
um, whatever. <laughs> um, it doesn't worry me because it's really the it, it, the true rewards are immaterial. The feel the feel good of of buying I don't know a, a new phone. You get a new phone and then you load all your apps and they'll keep you busy. And the reward, the, the feeling inside, the rewards you feel are nothing compared to walking out of an orphanage, an orphanage full of, full of children who have got no parents or parents who don't want them, don't love them or can't support them. Parents that may have lost their lives through farming incidents. Uh, we're not talking, you know, poverty stricken. Children that are intellectually handicapped and seen as being defective, subhuman by humanity. People have decided, judged, they're unable to play an active role in society. Walking out from the orphanage, having seen that children's Tears of joy. Caring that. that. That you never lose that. That just makes you more driven. You think you see firsthand the changes. These children that have suddenly they've got these picture books in their hands. And they can learn from these books. Wow. And their their books. Their book. They can learn to write their name on the inside cover. They can learn how to do crafts. They can learn how to become independent. There's no... For a child to be cared for all of a child's life is a, is a burden. But think how that child feels when they reach adulthood and they've always got to ask, 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 ask. The greatest gift is one of independence. We started that with creating devices so people can learn to become their own doctors. We did this with our education videos so people can become empowered. We do this with our charity work as well. With these children, we empower them to develop skills. We, we give them um, the materials I need to make handcrafts so they can sell. It doesn't matter if they make a profit. They have all of a sudden gone from worthless, in fact, a, a burden, to an asset. And this mind shift. And yes, they may have to live in that orphanage for their entire lives. But they are not a burden anymore. Mm. They get visitors. We went there again, and they had a um, display. On the display, they had done handcraft. They had drawn two children holding hands and embroidery. They had made tissue holders, crisscross, beautiful white and red. It's just so beautiful. And they were selling them to these visitors. And they, visitors, when they go and they buy something from these children, the children get the money, not the orphans, the children get the money. And so they can, they can buy whatever they want. So it's the independence. The, think about the blessings, the, 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 um, the blessings path. The people buying the gifts, they get these beautiful gifts that they can put on a display and they can tell other people where they got it, and so more people go to the orphanage. The people directly who bought their gifts, they get blessings as well, and the children, of course. So it's growing, it's growing. And so now, okay, the, um, the only thing around this orphanage, I mean, I'm focusing on one particular, but we support multiple. Um, it had a, a tea plantation around it, so people just go into the area to buy fresh tea. Now there's another reason why people go there, and it's almost become a tourist place, <laughs> which is great. It's great, right? Um, because of the orphanage. And the orphanage now is like a, like a star. 
we've visited all people's homes. It's equally sad. We're very proud people through dementia, no longer to able to live by themselves, um, sustain themselves. And so they're put into an old people's home by a family. Uh, now, when these people, of course, were young, they had the family. They worked. They toiled hard to provide at a time when things were super tight. You cannot understand now in most countries is how hard times were then, and they did it. And now they're just part. For these people, we provide material things, um, sanitary items, as well as money, to make sure that the, you know, that the money goes to the people that need it. We only support um, places and charities, other charities, which have got a similar mind to ours, where if I put one dollar in, I don't expect 80 cents to go to the people who want it. I'm talking about volunteer charities where you put one dollar in, one dollar goes to the person. Not important. And there's no marketing, no um, fees or salary cutoffs or anything. I was supporting um, two children in Uganda. Um, and I, I, I learned what percentage of my money actually made its way to my child. Um, I guess I can say the percentage because I won't name who, what the organisation was. It was a major one. It was 45%. Actually, less, they had the audacity to make it less than half. But we want to support people that do it through the heart. Uh, how do these people actually survive? Or be, they, because they, li they live on a shoestring, they might have a job and then do this on the side. And so, yeah, of course I want to um, support people like-minded, people that really, really want to make that change and understand that the... Um, the rewards are far greater, you know, in the spiritual sense. And they're not, they're, they're not, it's the sort of thing that isn't taught at schools, okay, but it's something which is more important than what, what you taught at schools, at schools. So that's it. Okay, so I'll stop this year. Um, yeah, that, that's us and what we do and everything. Um, sorry to spend a bit of time on that. We do have a website, goodness knows where it is, um, explaining the different charities uh, that we support in our own charity work. Um, I think it's important, it's important for people to know that when they buy from us, they are a, buying from a company that has got morals yeah. and B, um, that we put even their money <laughs> to good use. It's, it's actually a bit more than that. You know, um, each month we set free live animals, just um, our company group and, and other um, people, maybe 50, 50 of us, we all get together, buy a huge amount of animals and set them free, animals that, oh, wow. which, were, which were destined for the kitchen table. And after doing that, there is an opportunity to pass blessings and we bless the... Uh, people that buy products from us because they're sick and they need every help they need. Even though they, um, it's got nothing to do with the religion, they can be Christian or whatever, um, but blessings and goodness is through all religions. And so we just pray for them and uh, pray for their recovery. For a device that we sell, we have the Ho'oponopono um, oh, yes. blessing. And what is yes. this blessing? Well, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. We have this hidden inside almost all our accessories. 
So these healing frequencies pass through those words. And it doesn't matter if you believe or anything, it's there. And the intent is there, which is prayer. When you pray, the intent is for allowing God to heal. Intent is everything. And when you're sick, we want to put everything positive your way. So all of our users become well. Wow, wow, wow. This is this is mind blowing. I'm so glad you explained all this. I'm so glad that people know where, you know, when you, you, you buy one of these devices, where who do you buy it from and where does your <laughs> money go? You know, it goes and it, that, that, that was very important. And uh, because the, the, the charity, yes, you, you do not advertise it. It, 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 when you, we go on the website, it's not what, you know, oh, we do charity. No, you don't see all that. You know, you're very humble. You're so humble and you do so much. You know, the more, the more people, you, the more you find humility in people, the more these people do amazing things for humanity, you know. So that's, that's, I love that. So, uh, well, uh, the, so what you explained while you were showing the, the products and quickly you showed the, the, the program, uh, that, that was super useful. Do you offer trainings and courses? Uh, we do. We, if you go to, gosh, um, I think it's spooky2videos.com. Okay. There's a series of videos starting from the very beginning. I wrap in the box, plugging it all in. And then I go from there to dipping your toes in the water, starting the software, being Great. a little bit overwhelmed, but step by step by step. So all the links to all of that I'm going to put in the description of the video so everybody knows where to click. <laughs> and... Uh, at any time, if if there if people have difficulty, um, we have uh, the spooky two rife for life. There's rife number four rife dot. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, that's the uh, Facebook group. We have a spooky two forum, and we have. Well, in fact, if you just go to spooky two dot com, you can see the different links from there. And uh, there's even Spooky 2 support. So it's like, help! <laughs> like Spooky 2 support. <laughs> and we, I think it's 24 hours now, they provide cover. A real human. How's that? A real human. Not oh, you speak one. to a real person. A real, yeah. Well, what happens is you log on. I love and then, that. And then, and then, and then it's got um, certain, you can search for um, things and it comes up with solutions. But after a while, a box appears. I think it's on the bottom right-hand corner. And that's that's the real human. And then uh, if you type in that real human box, then a real human will reply. And then you go from there. Because uh, let's face it, some people just aren't familiar or comfortable with using a computer. Um, computers aren't a mod, uh, aren't an, you know, they weren't around really 30 years ago. And many of our users are, getting on in years and want to heal themselves and they've unfortunately got this piece of equipment in front of them which they don't understand. So it's nice and comforting to speak to a real person. And you know, because everyone in our company, uh, they're very good people, very loving, you'll get the best help. I'm sure. The, I'm sure. The support girls, they are... Chinese, they can speak English, but English is a second language. So maybe things aren't expressed perfectly, but um, they do the best they can. They work very hard. And if you look, if you really look at what they're doing, everything, you realize that their, their soul is there. You know, they really, really want to go that extra mile to help people. So I, 
you, you know, well, the, the software, I so I have it, I've experienced it. The software um, looks scary, but in fact, once you know, it's it's simple. You just need to know. You, so you just need to go, click on the videos, you go through them. It's very well explained. And then, you know, well, John, you, you showed us it's it's simple. You, you select the disease, you, you then the program, you click start and it's, you know, you plug Anymore. your, <laughs> you plug it. So don't, don't something I want to advise, don't do like as I did myself. Um, I bought a random um, coil, which is a good coil, but not adapted um, and I couldn't feel anything and I went, is it that working? So you need to buy the real appliances that, 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 that correspond that, that these guys make, then it works, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and, um, but the other coil, if you say it is, it is a beautiful coil. It's is beautiful. It just... mm. I'm sure it works with, with, uh, it, it, well, it was working. You explained to me before we recorded that, that it was working, but the, it's, uh, the, um, the, the energy level is very low. So you won't hear or feel anything. It's a subtle healing, which is quite often a, a, a good way to go. Yes. Yes. So, uh, well, um, I recommend everyone really, really this, this is the future. It's already the present okay it's already the present using the knowledge that always was here in nature it's now in the present and it's going to become the future that's why we're going through and it's already here so that the future is here and that's why i recommend that i really recommend it and the beautiful people who are behind this thing there we go John, really, really thank you for what you're doing, for your tenacity, your resilience, endurance, and to never give up, even moving to China China because you didn't want to give up. And uh, that that's fantastic. Well, tenacity and resilience, that's uh, th those euphemisms for being stubborn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'll accept that. Yes, I am stubborn, but I'm stubborn for the right reason. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Stubbornness, it's called resilience and tenacity, <laughs> you know, in, on the, for the evolution uh, and progress. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I, I, I dream of a day when uh, everyone knows how they can resolve your own health. I dream of a day when getting old doesn't mean aches and pains or reduced energy. I dream of a day where there is no need to suffering and you don't just live a long life, but a long and happy, pain-free life without fear of getting sick. That's, that's my fear. That's one, that's one we are going to succeed with it's going to happen yes yes all this that you wish that we wish will happen and uh, these times are a challenge because these are times of transition of transformation it's not easy people like you bring help and a hand to get the other side of the darkness and the confusion and you are doing this you are helping humanity you people like you are bridges to the the, the safe side after the storm what 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 would you advise that always ask this to my my guest um, at the end what would you what would be your words of advice for humanity to go through these times of challenge? My words will be this. Pass love forward. Mm. Which means not just helping your family, your friends, people you know. Pass it forward without expecting anything back. 
to people that you don't know, strangers on the street. Life has got a habit of swinging things around. If you pass love forwards blindly, without question, without strings, you will be rewarded. Do not do it for that reason. <laughs> I'm just saying a, an, a side effect, effect of this. Pass it forwards because you'll be making that big change in humanity that we need. We need to put humanity back into civilization. We are so channel, uh, tunnel focused on material things. We've totally forgotten what is truly important. We need to go back to those times. So my words, my closing words, I guess, would be to pass love forward. Pass love forward. Wise words. John, thank you. John, why thank you. May all the blessings you give with compassion to humanity be returned to you a hundred times and may the flow just continue and uh, on behalf of humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Elena, and thank you so much for giving me the privilege of being on your show. It's been uh, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. The pleasure is for me and is for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.